better during Bangor, or not during Bangor, during COVID-19, is more sex. You're at home. Not a lot to do. He's totally lying. <laughs> Next. Hey everyone, and uh, welcome to the surprise edition of Patriot Crusader Mission Podcast number seven tonight. I got Lauren, I finally, she's been so busy lately, I had to, uh, you know. He found me. I had to find her and abduct her to get her on camera, um, <laughs> but uh, here she is. So uh, while you got her, uh, if there's any questions, make sure you ask him. Because it's kind of a rare thing around here for Lauren to come to work. Disappear. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Hold on. Did you just say it's a rare thing for you to come to work? I caught that. Jeez. We'll talk about that one later. <laughs> yeah. So the things I wanted to talk about today. Um, I really want, you know, the NFL season starts is today, Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah, it starts tomorrow. So um, when people ask me, you know, am I going to be watching the NFL this year? My answer has been the same for all sports. Never heard of her, right? Which Lauren had never heard that term before. Yeah, I don't know I, where it came from. I have. I just did, wanted to make sure that's what you intended to, to yeah. spell when you were yeah. introducing. Not in that context. Yeah, so... NHL, never heard of her. NBA, never heard of her. Major League Baseball, never heard of her. NFL, never heard of her. NASCAR, never heard of her. PGA, never heard of her. All those things, never heard of her. Because I'm done with sports, guys. Um, you know, I'm tired. I mean, sports used to be the one thing that we could all go and watch and not have to deal with politics, right? You could. It's the one of those rare things where Democrats and Republicans could sit side by side, forget who they were for a little while, and um, and scream and cheer for a sport. Now, I am a reformed uh, football NFL addict. Um, I used to be, you know, when I was a pretty miserable person, that's what I'd do to escape. I'd base my whole week around Sunday, and it's what I did to forget about my miserable circumstances. And, um, and I'll tell you, since COVID-19, um, you know, coronation, all this stuff going on, mm -hmm. I don't miss it at all. Well, you had already kind of eased out over the last couple of years with the kneeling when that started and then yeah. got back in because the Patriots supported Trump. <laughs> right. So <laughs> and then uh, back out. But you, you've had practice with giving them up. Yeah, so I've pretty much had gone cold turkey on them during the whole uh, kneeling thing that kept coming up. And then I, you know, Belichick came out for Trump and Brady had a MAGA hat in his locker. And so I was like, all right, if I'm going to support one My team, it's going to be them. <laughs> but it's really just gotten to the point where you know, I really don't care. Like, I really feel stupid and I really feel silly for giving up so much of my life for a bunch of people who don't even care about me. Like mm -hmm. Tom Brady doesn't care about me. Bill Belichick doesn't care about me. Yeah. I mean, they're all great at what they do, but what do they do? Like, imagine if we could have unlocked Bill Belichick's mind on medicine or That's military good. strategy interesting point. or something worthwhile. Like I'm not even sure we should have pro sports anymore. Like college. Great then turn these people on to like real life, mm -hmm. you know, instead of being these spoiled little children that go out there and talk about how oppressed they are when they're making millions of dollars. I mean, it's all, it all ties to the whole entertainment industry in effect. They're part of that. That's what people get out of it. It's entertainment, you know, so it's, at what, at what point, if you say we don't need pro sports, then kind of what other entertainment might you say we, let's do without? Well, I mean, with pro I mean, again, I I don't know. I mean, right now I'm not watching any movies. Right. I mean, 
it's so bad. TV's gotten so bad. I had to go back to Spencer for Hire. It's One of my good. favorite TV shows from the 80s. And it's still freaking good, guys. I mean, Spencer's it's still a, a guy cheesy. you want to be. Yeah. I mean, it's a little cheesy, but I can't get away, believe they got away oh with my goodness. Yeah. on the TV in the 80s. Yeah, that was an episode. Yeah, yeah I mean, dropping the N-word, you know, calling people colored, you know, I mean... Holy smokes. I mean, it was like taking a time capsule back. But um, it was good. I mean, Spencer's still the guy you want to be. He's still the fighter. Captain Justice, Robin Hood guy that you kind of dig. You know, he can knock somebody's face in, quote poetry, and then cook up a five-star meal. Um, You know, I can't do that, so maybe I'll do... Uh, knock someone's face in, quote the Bible. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I got to pick up a third talent because I'm definitely not a chef. Lauren's or, the best. Or a great that. takeout. <laughs> yeah, or a great takeout. <laughs> but no, I mean, with sports, I'm just so over it, man. I'm just so over being, you know, the BLM crap. I mean, you know, people protesting during the anthem for my friends that died and the heroes that died before us and just disrespecting the flag and disrespect like the country's got anything to do with it. You know what I'm saying? The most just country in the history of the world. And, you know, I guess, you know, on Thursday, they're going to do something called the black national anthem before the, 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 the white, I didn't know there was a white national anthem, but I guess there's a black and white national anthem. And then I guess we're going to need a yellow national anthem. And then a kind yeah, of tan, maybe the other one. a There's beige the, national anthem. The real national anthem counts for everybody, but the blacks get a special one. Yeah, I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. And it's just made me despise sports even more. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I just, if we, you know, again, I've decided to take my time and plug it into something more useful. Some of you may have seen my rage where... <laughs> I decided to say, hey, you know what? I'm instead of wasting my time on fantasy football and watching, you know, first and ten and all these shows and all this garbage about a sport that no one even knows my name or cares about me, maybe I should become a better husband. Maybe I should be a better father. Maybe I should be a better friend, a better neighbor, a better citizen. Mm-hmm. You know, better uh, Christian. Maybe I should be a better follower of Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know, and all these things I've been doing, and while I haven't been doing sports. No, I mean, it is, I, I don't know if coincidence is the right word, that that our Sundays have been taken up by sports and things that utterly <sighs> don't matter, and that's yeah. supposed to be God's day, yep. and your time to read the Bible, and go to church, and spend time with family, and people just totally give that up because their game's on for three hours, or and then yeah. let's watch two or three of them. Yeah, I mean, I used to be all about it, you know, and then it was hockey and then this, that. And now it's just like, you know what? You got, I don't have anything in common with that. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't have anything in common with a pro- professional athlete anymore. Uh, they don't share my values. They don't believe in the same country that I do. Drew Brees. I was, yeah. What a disappointment. What a freaking wet tried. noodle. He tried. he tried to speak out and then get his face caved in and then caved and apologized. Yeah. And now he's wearing Jacob Blake sticker on his helmet. Never mind the 22 vets that kill themselves every day. Mm-hmm. Never mind the hero cops that get murdered on the street of the day or our veterans who get killed protecting our country every day. No, we're going to put an accused, you know, sexual assault predator, you know, resisting police arrest felon. Well, I think the whole hypocrisy is the times, and I'm not a sports person, so I pro- might get some of this wrong, but the times before where players tried to put a personal Positive belief things. or something yeah. else on their gear. And they got smashed and down and by the NFL. it was against policy yeah. to, to express in that way, So yeah. and now people can do it for the Black Lives Matter. Yeah, and now this whole, like, like Mark Cuban, if you ever respected him before, he's a total freaking turd. I've got no respect for him now. Um, you know, he's 100% owned by China and for him to be the critic of he is of our president while he's over there, basically, you know, giving a back rub to the head, to the, you know, the, the communist China, you know, president 
And because don't want to offend them because they might lose access to their 3 billion people they have over there. I mean, it's just absolutely disgusting. You freaking coward, you know? I mean, just a freaking coward. You just take a shot here where you're protected by your free speech. Go over there and say it, brother, you know? I mean, just clown. You know, it's just so dis- discouraging. Ever, not it's kind of a tangent. We're going to talk about coronavirus in it later, but you never know what happened with him like going on that whole business economy relaunch thing. Remember how he joined the team with Trump and you said that that was a brilliant move to get someone who was so outspoken on the Yeah, I don't remember, recall what like, happened. That, that. that was like a big thing when it first happened and then I haven't heard anything right. from it. Have to look into well, that. I'm sure it dissolved with all the coronavirus, whether it was, you know, coronavirus 2.0 or it's not a big deal this week. It is a big deal this week. You know, I think Trump, and this is a little tangent, is absolutely a genius. He's, he's successfully turned the Democrat Party into the anti-vaxxer party. <laughs> I mean, Everyone. it used to be the right yeah. was anti-vaxxers. Now it's a Democrat Party because Trump said he's going to have a virus I mean, a vaccine by November yeah. before the election. So now everyone doesn't want it on the left. Right. I mean, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. He should come out, um, you know, he should go anti-gun because then the left will be pro-gun the very next day. Maybe so. You know, I mean, it, it's, he, I mean, he's a Jedi master. I mean, I know he sounds, you know, I call him Yoda because he looks ridiculous. He sounds ridiculous and then uses the force and just totally kicks your butt. And that's what he does against the media and the Democrats all day, every day. I mean, you know, how he's played the riots has been masterful. You know, he didn't send in the National Guard because then it would, he would have been the brutal one. Mm-hmm. You know, he said, we're here. We're a phone call away. We want to come Use out. Us. Use us. And no, you got all these liberal piece of crap, you know, leaders saying, no, we've got it. And then you have, you know, Portland burning down for over 100 days now. Mm-hmm. I mean... I just, you know, now I live in the Democrat, Democratic state of Maine. I live in the northern part, which is red. They split their delegates. But, you know, it makes me wonder, you know, how stupid am I to move to a blue state or a purple state? You know, I want nothing to do with this stuff. I want to go somewhere where it's so red that I never have to see a Biden sign. You know, which we state. walk around the block here in Bangor and it's... Bang. Gore. I'm not going to call it Bangor. Bangor until it's worthy of being oh. called what it's called. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's banger until they get their act straight, which I don't think is ever going to happen. Ah, okay. We draw the line. All right. <laughs> Good excuse anyways. Yeah. Good excuse. But I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's disheartening. And then, you know, I don't see a single Trump sign around here. Why? Because if you put out a Trump sign, your car is going to get keyed. You're going to brick through your window or they'll call you a racist, or they'll call you a million other things. I actually, when I was driving back from the vet today, kind of, I would say it was in the city, it was not in BZ, There's, um, there was a stand selling all the Trump shirts and flags and stuff. Good for them. But it, th- here's the thing is, I think because the silent majority is being so silent, and basically, if you put an American flag out, you're a Republican. Yeah, isn't that sad? If you're not, right. If you put an American flag out, you're a Republican, and you're voting Trump. And if you put a BLM sign or these new stupid signs where I believe in science and kindness is everything and, you know, no human is illegal. And yeah. it's like, people, you just suck. Just shut up and, you know. I see that there was um, someone shared on Facebook that some elementary school printed that off and had that in their window, that, that sign. And, but they misspelled kindness. <laughs> Really, guys. <laughs> awesome, but, yeah. awesome. Fail. You know, it's just it's just gotten to the point where you know, I guess I'm gonna list every one of my beliefs in the window outside. Well, so what I think is by. funny about that is, at least half of the things listed, you could say, "Oh, awesome, you're a Republican." Yeah, exactly. Science, science, science is real. Is real. <laughs> We're all about that. Let's yeah. talk about when life starts. Yeah. Let's talk about evolution. And how nothing has ever changed species before. Let's talk about a whole bunch of different things. Yeah. So it's like, I don't, but everyone sees that sign and knows what they believe. Yeah. Well, because, you know, the media has been in their, 
in the think tank. So there's, you know, so to get back on the whole sports thing, um, you know, having your entire week back because you don't have to base it around senseless sports. I mean, it's it's been pretty liberating. Yeah. You know, I mean, you get... Gosh, you're just sitting around with all your free time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but thinking about this and thinking about... Um, the positive things that are happening because of this COVID, you know, because of sports, you know, have was taking a pause and gave someone, everyone a chance to figure out what to do with their time. Um, I started thinking about all the things that are good about COVID that have happened since COVID-19. Um, can you think of any? Sure. What do you got? I think one of the biggest ones is the homeschooling, which we've talked about before. Great. How great it is for parents to be more involved in education, have more of a say of kind of how their day is structured and get eyes on what the public school system is. Yeah, I think that's been a huge eye-opener for a lot of people out there uh, being like, what in the hell are they actually teaching my kids? And then this whole, like, rule that these you can't be in the room when they're being taught. Is that? Yeah, there are school districts that have banned parents in the room while they're being taught because you can't sit in a classroom when they're being taught. Wow, I didn't know that. Like, good freaking luck with that. I'd seen some, like, things that teachers are having to say now, video, and one was, like, about reprimanding a parent for being too talkative in the background, but I didn't know that some place, wow. Like, I'll be damned if you're going to tell me what I can do in my house. Yeah. You know? Um, and then we've seen overstepping. We've seen teachers call SWAT teams in on be on kids for having an airsoft weapon mm-hmm. on the back wall. Out of the background, yeah. I mean, just stupid, just stupid. Like, I mean, I mean, it's just, it's really exposed public education, and I think it's also really exposed how unnecessary universities are. Universities, yeah. You know how colleges, you know, basically, I don't think you need them anymore. Partying. Yeah, I mean, I honestly think that online classes are pretty much the answer, and you don't have to send your kid away to be brainwashed and spend sixty thousand dollars a year experiment. so they can become a, a socialist and be taught by professors who've never had a freaking job in a day in their life other than being a professor. I have Did no you idea. The George Washington professor. No, let's hear it. The one that um, has been lying about being black for years. Now. Oh, imagine that. Her entire family put it on a resume. That's how, why, part of why she got her job as a professor. And So uh, another Elizabeth Warren? She's been, she's white as the day is long. And uh, she's been, and she looks white. Like, I don't know how she's been passing off as black, but that's what she's She must have had a tan, like been sunning a lot and she's when been, she applied She's been job. outed, and so she confessed and then. Term- given terminated no she oh, lost good. her job imagine she's like, that. i can't expect to be forgiven she's probably getting ready to retire anyways she's young really mm-hmm. oh so this is relatively new oh this is brand new wow brand new. okay i thought she had this illustrious career i don't know i mean i don't know how long she's been a professor there but she's pretty young um and this just happened that she was outed but it's that, so, that's, but it's how bad, that's how bad that's how bad it is. Ran, I'd seen headlines on this for the last couple of days, but Tucker did a story on tonight. And he was like, just kind of the irony that people like in all of this like white privilege, everyone like saying it's but people are lying to be, white, to be black to get now, jobs. But now, yeah, <laughs> people are going the other lying way. to be black or Native American, Elizabeth Warren to get jobs. I mean, I think that's pretty telling right there. How much privilege is there in that? Nobody's lying to be white to get a job. You know. I mean, we had one of our clients send us a diversity sheet. Yes. You know, basically asking, you know, as a vendor for them, how diverse were we? I mean, give me a break, man. Female owned. Yeah. We, fem- rock, we rocked that question. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's ridiculous. It's gotten to the point where it's like, do you want me to teach you how to not get shot in the face? Do you care how many, you no, know? They have not cared. No. We are still <laughs> we are still providing them training. <laughs> but it's just ridiculous that we even have to go through that. Yeah, well. They got to keep score. It was all organizations had a knee-jerk reaction after the whole George Floyd thing, and I think Not everyone, all organizations. everyone scrambled to make just, sure they were towing the line. So it's just, you know, that's just part of the deal. So, the, so some of the other things. So homeschooling's one. 
um, you know, I would say um, becoming closer with your family is another one. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that since there's not as much to do and everyone, you know, people are just seem to be plugging in more. Yeah, should I, I, I don't want to be like pessimist Patty on that one, but that does go against the divorce rate that you mentioned the other day. Imagine that. <laughs> divorce <laughs> rates have gone so up. close to your family, you realize you don't like them anymore. Or moving close to them. <laughs> <laughs> and having that work out so well. But, you know, it's, um, it's been, I mean, that's been one of the challenges, but I, but I do think, you know, people getting to spend time with their kids more. Yes. You know, and with their significant other more and, um, and all those things, uh, I think is another benefit. Do you have another one? <sighs> well, what's your next one? Oh man. Saving money here. from eating out. Oh, well, I was going to say, we're just going to take out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but we're not, doing, we're not doing it nearly as much as we used to. Yes, and we that's the true. bills that's very true. Nowhere near as high. That's very true. Like, I looked at our monthly expenses, and we're down, like, you know, an, an awful lot of money from what we used to spend at Burton's. That is true. Yeah, so I'll, expanding off of that is cutting back on just anything that's not absolutely necessary expense-wise. So yeah, I think it's, trimming the fat. It's forced us all to kind of do more with less. Mm -hmm. and you start like I'm I remember we were paying a significant amount for a product that we use as the company and someone asked me what it does and I didn't know and that's when I called and canceled it that day <laughs> I'm like I have no idea why I'm paying for this I know I needed yeah. it for one client now I'm not so sure anymore yeah our doggies no longer have a little health insurance plans yeah I mean it's ridiculous our dog yeah, we had I'm insurance for all our dogs older girls don't get sick the older girls get sick, they go to the Rainbow Bridge a little bit sooner. No. Ah, they're going to heaven. Heaven's a good place. Rainbow Bridge. Yeah. They get their angel wings. So it's all good. They become soul balls. <laughs> yeah, soul balls. <laughs> Lauren's theory when you go to heaven is you become a soul ball. A soul Do you want to talk about that? Well, the, you just said it. I <laughs> talk about we, this soul we ball man. We lose our bodies and we just become soul balls up in heaven and our soul balls hang out and like like what color are the soul balls i guess i probably just pictured like a glowing white soul ball but i don't oh, know are they that. all glowing white or they're going to be different colors I, I hadn't pictured different colors hopefully they're not all like like it's not like dimmer if you were like less of a yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, you're gonna glow based on how bad you sucked on Earth. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna shine so. Bright. Yeah, you're gonna. <laughs> That's your reward. You're a little brighter of a ball. I'm a brighter soul ball. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the other things that I thought that were great was you know people plugging back into church because they're yes. you know. Um, because one, they were scared. When people are scared, they tend to lean on something bigger than themselves. And I know that, you know, Christianity is experiencing a boom right now in spite of being oppressed right now. Yeah, I mean, it, depending on who you talk to as far as kind of whether being able to find services online is a good thing or not. I think that Ken feels like people are relying too much almost on online services and that's not driving yeah. the need back into the actual facility. Um, but I think for so many people who, who couldn't or were scared to go to church or couldn't go to church or anything like that, um, there's so many people out there now who are still having to rely on those online services. So thank goodness they're out there. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the online services are, are a boon. I think that, you know, everyone getting caught up to speed on modern technology. Mm -hmm. And I only say that because I know a lot of old people can't travel well, particularly in rural areas, mm -hmm. right? But so, and I know there's a lot of people who may be intimidated on going to a church for the first time. And I, you know, and I see a community in some of these uh, live streams where that's their only con connection to the church and they feel like they're a part of it. Yes. I think that that's, that's a good thing. Yeah. Well, and that got, I mean, so Calvary Chapel, Bangor, where we go, um, 
he started this four day a week extra like bonus study yeah. every night and people around the country are following it. And he, he did that in, at the time that the church got kind of locked down and he wanted to be able to continue to reach people. So it has added content out there for people to, yeah. to access, which is great. The other thing, positive thing that I think that it's done is it's separated the kind of Christians from the Christians. Okay. You know, meaning the casual Christian who, um, you know, the, I, I don't know what the, what the technical term is, the Christian lights from true believers. You know, I think we see that in Ken Graves and Calvary Chapel and a lot of Calvary chapels around the country who would not be shut down, who, you know, bent over backwards and worked day and night to minister to their people. And, you know, and other people who are just like, eh, you know. So are you, are you speaking kind of to the, the past? I'm talking about the pastors. The yeah, I'm talking about the Christian pastors and the leadership. Like a lot of them just treated this like it was a vacation. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and, you know, I'm glad that it's pastors that are pushing back on this because, um, you know, I, I see, you know, you know, I'm in the middle of on this, you know, <clears throat> I'm what I would call a moderate when it comes to COVID-19. I think it kills some people and I don't think it's as bad as they say it is, but I don't think it's not as bad as the other side says it is. Mm -hmm. Right. Like this study that everyone said, what was it? 6% yeah, the death of people death. died of COVID-19 directly. That doesn't mean it's not a COVID-19 death. And what do I mean by that? All right. So if I got COVID and I had a compromised heart, right and I would have lived another 20 years in my compromised heart, but COVID came in, kicked my butt, and killed me, that's a COVID death. Yeah, and so the, the study or the new numbers were saying that only 6% or whatever that number was were like purely coronavirus. COVID yeah, nothing else. That killed them versus having comorbid comorbid. Bidities. Comorbidities. <laughs> a little bit. Co. co <laughs> more. Bidities. There you go. <laughs> Holy smokes. I'm not usually the one who with the word searching problems. Whoa. <laughs> she just threw me under the bus. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe. Um, anyways. Cancer, et cetera. Heart problems, as Jason said. Kidneys, all those other be things, right? For a lot longer with now, them. obviously, I obviously don't agree with somebody who had COVID nineteen who died from a drive by shooting being called a COVID nineteen death either. Yeah, right. So it's going to take you know years and years for us to sift through this data. the The main thing is is the cure is worse than the disease right now. Mm -hmm. Like if America doesn't start, the economy doesn't fire back up. The suffering on the other side is like. We're doing webinars weekly now for organizations telling them about a coming storm, and that's coming to you guys. We're going to get ready to do one for the public as well. Like banks that we're talking to, CEOs of banks and other you know insurance companies, they are the tripwire, the warning detector for all of us on what's to come, and they're seeing high balances they're seeing foreclosures they're seeing repossessions they're seeing these things coming because all this free money that we were all running on this year you know yep. wasn't free guys it's had to come from somewhere and we're gonna have to pay for that right and when we pay for that or when that money runs out and those jobs don't come back and all these businesses that were forced to close like how many restaurants are really going to be there after this I can't remember what it was. Some crazy high percentage. Two out of three, or something like that. New York that. percentage that's gonna that are gonna close. New York is gonna be a wasteland. Yeah. Like everyone who has money has fled New York City, and I know that because it's driving real estate prices up in Maine. So all the New Yorkers are coming up here. If you're gonna vote Democrat and screw this place up like you did down in New York, stop in Massachusetts go away. Stop way. in Massachusetts. <laughs> stay there. They'd love to have you. They've got lattes and soy things. All you want there. You yes. can enjoy all your soy lattes in Massachusetts and Connecticut <laughs> and Rhode Island. You'll fit right in. Don't come to Maine and New Hampshire and screw up a good thing here. Um, but anyways, you know, they're fleeing everywhere. Everyone who's got money is fleeing. Everyone's leaving the cities. Mm -hmm. 
right? Now, I, t- today was the first time I've seen a meme where they were blaming corporate America for cooking this up to drive down real estate prices so people could snatch up all the inner city uh, real estate market. Uh, by making them these wastelands and then all, all that stuff. I don't know about that. That doesn't, you know, doesn't ring true to me. I think this is all a ploy to, uh, by China to crash our currency and to crash our economy so that we lose the global exchange currency that we have right now, which is our, which props up our economy over everyone else's. If we lose that, mm-hmm. if China becomes a global currency, oh, we're, we're in for a really rough ride. And so I think add that to the list of <laughs> right. really rough rides. Well, I think that's on. why we have to really look at this and say, hey, if we are in a Great Depression, how many lives, how many suicides, how many people are going to die? And you know what? Maybe you shouldn't be 500 pounds. Maybe everyone needs to drop a little weight, get more in shape. I certainly do. Well, I think that was, that was going to be another good thing that's come out of this is, you know, people are, they are, being forced to kind of go outside and exercise more because that's something to do. Yeah, but I think I think as a whole, I think we've become more unhealthy because I think everyone who used to go to a gym can't afford to go buy thirty thousand dollars in gym equipment. Yeah. So they're walking or running or they're just sitting around. Like I can't tell you how many people are have posted some before and after pic, oh, really? before pics of COVID Instead and then of the college yeah, and, and yeah, the Corona fifteen, the Corona twenty five, yeah. or whatever it is, you know. <laughs> Um, you know, so I think that's part of the downside of, of this. Um, but one of the good things is I think that for those of us who want to live in rural America, um, our dream has kind of been solidified and affirmed, you know, uh, you know, the how, by the way, we got an offer on our house. Whoop, whoop. Yay. We're so pumped. Um, but, um, you know, living out in the country, having a gym in your garage, being able to walk your own land, everything that we've been prepping for and wanting for our whole lives has kind of been validated, mm-hmm. you know, and it's good. You don't, you know, you don't have to walk in the street with a bunch of people with their dogs where it's irritating and, you know, so nice. and a million and one freaking cats it. everywhere. Why do dogs have to be on leashes, but cats don't? Our whole neighborhood smells like cat piss. Just saying. <laughs> I mean, it does. And so I get, I can smell it a mile away. They're everywhere. You know, I haven't seen one natural animal other than a squirrel in Maine, but I sure hell, sure as hell have seen a ton of cats. Yeah. That's like the main animal. It shouldn't be moose. It should be cats because they're everywhere. And isn't our animal a mosquito? Yeah. <laughs> and their state neighbor. bird is the, is the mosquito. <laughs> yeah, and the chickadee. And the black flies. Chickadee. Yeah. Black flies. Yeah. Thankfully, that was a short discomfort. We missed that season. No, we went on our walk in the bog. Yeah, that was a sh- small little taste of it. We went on. We had this great ambition. We moved to Bangor, Maine, and there was this great thing on the map that, that said Bangor Forest. Who doesn't want to go for a walk in Bangor really Forest? Nice. Right? You know, when we're used to five acres and mountain views and streams in our backyard, and now we're on a little lot. So we're like, hey, let's go do that. We go and it's a bog and we may get 10 yards into the grass and the dog Valkyrie is covered in black flies and they're biting like biting flies. I'm my arms by, we made it 20 minutes by the end of 20 minutes. My arms were covered in blood for me squashing mosquitoes that were already it on me. So bad. It was disgusting. We it was disgusting. Back. <laughs> yeah, we have now we have not gone back. It won't go back until everything's dead. Which in Maine is most of the year. I don't know. I mean, it's, it was eighty degrees today in Maine. It's coming. I'm praying for this cold weather that you everyone's want to be talking out in Colorado about. Colorado that uh, just had their like ninety degree. No, it was a hundred and one, and then thirty snowing. Yeah, thirty three and snowing or something. I'll take a few more bugs. And- Days, I'll think. take I'll take Blowing Rock, North Carolina, or Boone, North Carolina, and have not have to anyone, deal with any of this stuff. Anyone familiar with those areas? Because that's that's Jason. that's where I want to go. Tell me that it's terrible, because that's where I want to pack up and go to. I'm sure it's lovely to visit, lovely to live. Want to know how it is it for business? Yeah, 
Some of the other things that I find that are nicer is, um, you know, the streets are quiet. There's still a lot. I mean, I don't know. All I know is Bangor 19. I don't know Bangor regular when it's booming. But, you know, there's no traffic. The streets are good. Yeah. I mean, we went to Acadia National Park, which gets th- 3 million people a year, and it was a ghost town. It was great. Yeah, I think it's picked up, which is good for business for them. We Driving up here in the pandemic, the apocalypse traffic was fantastic. Yeah, going through New York City and not even how to tap your brakes. Yeah, I'm sure it's picked up some now, but uh, it's still better for travel. So some other things that um, that I found, you know, better during Bangor, or not during Bangor, during COVID-19, is more sex. You're at home. Not a lot to do. He's totally lying. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I have been planning on saying that, and I knew her face was going to turn purple. It's like the taboo topic. <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh. This is oh. why he has to dig me out of like the closet to come <laughs> host with him. He says stupid stuff like that. Stupid? What are you talking about? <laughs> Healthy relationships, you know, more quality time <clears throat> is a good thing. You know, if you've got a healthy relationship, you take care of your significant other. And good things happen. Next. Well, what's yours? Do you have any others? No. <laughs> I'm Pessimist Patty, so. Pessimist Patty, man, your mom is going to be pissed that you're using her name <laughs> for all these negative things. Oh, Pessimist negative Patty. Negative Nancy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you chose Pessimist Patty. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren's crushing it tonight on the show. I am. <laughs> All right. I had one Sunshine Lauren story. Oh, let's hear about it. Um, it it's not in, re- in response to COVID. It's in response to the protest stuff, though. All right, right go for it. Um, so there's, have you heard much at all about all of the um, faith and worship rallies that are going on in response to the protests? N- no. There's this guy, he was interviewed the other day, um, named Sean Fouch, something. And he has, he's held like 21 Let Us Worship rallies all around the country, like where these protests have been like really heavy in cities. They go mm-hmm. and they have huge worship rallies and you have a concert and draw huge crowds. And it's like this whole like faith undertone that's not getting any press. Imagine that but it's like warm and fuzzies going on in response to all the hate. So one of the other things that I think that is really good um, is, and it's probably, it's connected to COVID-19, but it's more connected to the riots, is more Americans are arming themselves and training themselves than ever before. Mm -hmm. Um, We have smashed the record for gun sales, ammo sales. There's a ton of first-time gun buyers out there, and I love it when Democrats go to buy a gun and they find out they can't walk out of the store with one right away. <laughs> They're watching them having to deal with the legislation that they put have in place. Seen stories that? Yeah, yeah, where they went in, like, what do you mean I can't walk out of it? It's unsafe in my neighborhood. These are your rules that you That's put in place. Funny. Yeah, so, um, but no, seeing everyone taking responsibility and realizing, you know, less reliance on government is always a good thing in my opinion. Yeah. And I think people arming themselves and getting training and not being so, you know, hooked up to the government to uh, to do that. And I think this is, you know, the riots and the civil unrest are to blame for that. And I think it's one of the good things that are happening. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think that people are waking up to the news media lying to them. Mm-hmm. I think everyone who's sat there and said mostly, like I saw a stat that 94% of all protests are peaceful BLM protests have been like, where the hell did they get that stat? It's like yeah. the most ridiculous, bogus stat ever. Impossible to prove. Poll testing sounds know. good. Yeah, you know, just absolutely ridiculous. And uh, they're believing their own eyes when they're seeing, you know, 90 foot of flames. Yeah. Um, businesses going up. in flames. So I think, you know, the great awakening of people, and I think it's really going to lead well, to a Trump landslide see, victory. They're starting to see business owners who 
look like people all around the country having issues with what's going on being directly like that salon owner in San Francisco you know she's like I've been here for 15 years and I'm s literally scared to walk back in my store now the one that Nancy Pelosi went to and um, she's like I, I will not go back I'm scared to go back I, my business is permanently closed and she's moving yeah and, who can't and blame so her people like she's someone who people can relate to and yep um, so the other thing is the evolving things that we should have done before COVID-19, but didn't because of government regulation, like being able to order booze to go. Yeah. Like getting food delivered all the time. Like it's basically driving everyone home to, to, to their home table and any business that that is built to get food out the door is going to thrive going forward. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, yeah, there it will yeah. come back someday when people want a premium seated waiting well, it's been experience really the whole like bring curbside pickup stuff that's curbside you know. pickups amazing um food i mean we are just recent examples we i haven't had food delivery in like 20 years yeah and now to be able to get anything to get groceries delivered to your house like, i haven't been to the grocery store in <laughs> months that's amazing for me i hate going there i go she goes because she's one of those people who has to see things to buy them I know I bought, when I was doing the grocery shopping for the family, it was the same stuff every week. Go out and pick your produce. And you walk the aisles and remember what you came for. <laughs> You're the queen of lists. You're telling me that's how you do yeah. it? Yes. Why don't you have a list for that? I miss things. Sometimes. Like what? It doesn't matter. <laughs> You're killing me. You're killing me. <laughs> no one cares about my grocery shopping list. I do. <laughs> I want to know because I'm the one usually placing the order online. So I'm just trying to be a better husband. But that's okay. All, All right. So anyways, <laughs> um, some of the other technology that is, you know, Drive through testing, I think, is great. Mm. All the telehealth stuff. Yeah, all People the te all yeah telehealth. Being in. instead of going in and sitting in an ER to get medicine for your cold, calling up and being right there. I think that's all. It's forced people to come out of the dark ages of the past and really start looking forward. Mm -hmm. Working from home, another great. I think it's really opened up a lot of people to that, and I think that commercial real estate is going to take a beating for it. Mm -hmm. E-commerce is exploding. You know, I think this is just a, a jump start to a whole new era of innovation that we're all going to be dealing with going forward. And I think those are all good stories to kind of um, to come out of this. You know, yes, there is a lot of bad. There is a lot of negative. We can all for focus on that. Or we can look at the good and say, wow, you know, you're not going to have to go to the doctor in person for, for an awful lot of stuff anymore. Mm-hmm. Right, you're gonna be able to sit home, pop, you open up your Zoom meeting, and there's your doc. That's pretty darn cool. That'd be nice, you know. And just you know, the convenience and being m more productive, and you treating the house as it should be, not as a place where you sleep, but as a hub for the family. Providing everything you yeah, need. Yeah, provides yeah. everything for the family. I mean, I'm seeing people here in Maine on little postage stamp lots with Freedom Gardens. Yeah, there's a lot of gardens around. A lot of Freedom Gardens. Front lawn is an entire garden. Yeah. That's yeah. really, really cool, you know. Yep. Yeah, so it'll be, it'll be, I hope that the businesses that are more impacted by what was in-person stuff, like the little mom and pop shops and stuff that might yeah. be less trafficked, you know, you just, you feel for those people who are going to have a harder time adapting whatever their service was to their, their entire services that are going down like me. I don't think I'm ever going to need another haircut again. I mean, I got you now with my little wall clippers. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's another good thing. Picking up skill sets. Right. Obviously, this head needs a little work. Yeah. You know, um, and I could use a trim right now, but. Yeah, he uh, forced me into buzz cut, and. I'm ready to go back down. Yeah. Take it all the way back down. Yeah. Two guard everywhere. Wow. Just get rid of it. No. No, we'll have some shape too. 
But I mean, Lauren doesn't really need a haircut. She I goes, she, hair. <laughs> yeah. Lauren literally just grabs it, takes about an inch off, calls it a day. That's my blessing of uh, not having as much hair anymore. It's easier to cut. Yeah. So, I mean, an awful lot of stuff, I think, that are really good positive things. What are some of the news things that you were looking at that you wanted to talk about tonight? Um, I mean, it's the con- continuing story, you know, about the p- impact on police right now. It's what's going on. Um, the resignation of police chiefs around the country is a bigger story going on right now. Yeah, Rochester, New York, the entire command staff walked out. Yeah, there's been uh, more than a dozen kind of higher profile chiefs that have quit recently um because they're saying they can't police this way and that it's you know they're doing their guys a service by walking away and um there was a video that some jerk like hit some older lady in front of a firehouse and there was no cops around and this is in in new york i think and there's no expectation that cops are going to be around anymore so all the firefighters went and chased this guy down it's like so now firefighters are stepping up to Fill the fill lame, the lame <laughs> firefighters finally get to do some real work. I thought you. <laughs> they were so busy cooking and working well, out and polishing the trucks. Mad, sad fires going on out west right now. So well, there are some firefighters. Who the wildfires burning. and all that stuff. That's a totally different. That's yeah. not your city firefighter who sits around and Boyle sleeps all day. Cats. Yeah, you're you're sit around and rescue cats and just go to every fender bender out there. Well so now they love you firefighters, but you guys if I had to do it all over again, I'd be a firefighter. Nobody wants to get paid to sleep like me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now they're chasing bad guys down the street. Yeah, no exactly. Cops anymore. <laughs> and then you have that horrible story about the veteran yes. with PTSD. Who- yeah, so warning to all parents. Um, there is, as of like today, yesterday, um, a horrible TikTok video going around. Um, a veteran was live streaming on Facebook and blew his head off with a shotgun, apparently. I have not tried to find this video, but apparently it's incredibly graphic. Um, And here's one for you. Well, I'll finish the story and then we can talk about it. Uh, So the the video has obviously been grabbed by people who like sensational videos. And um, someone or people now have spliced the footage of the suicide into seemingly innocent videos of like kittens and puppies and then put it out on TikTok, and it was put out in a way that it was coming up on, like, the highly recommended for you videos so that people were drawn, little kids were drawn to, like, oh, this video is recommended for me, and it was a puppy, and so they start playing it, and then it switches over to footage of the suicide, and so, like, all of these kids have seen this video, and TikTok is trying to pull this down, but it keeps being um, spliced into other videos so they can't really keep on top of it um so evil incarnate putting out like warnings get get your kids off tiktok i mean permanently but if they have an account at least try to get them off of it for the next couple days while this video runs its course and then loses popularity um because it's out there and your kid is going to walk into this video and having no idea what they're about to see um that's terrible but so on the facebook side of it he live streamed this and apparently he was very drunk and kind of rambling and incoherent building up to this. And um, friends who were watching this live stream started um, sending alerts to Facebook to try to get them to shut it down. Um, And then he killed himself. And so then it was known to be this suicide and they kept getting notices from the Facebook bots that, it didn't go against community standards, and so they were going to leave. The Imagine video that. So the video stayed up for hours after Facebook wow. was a suicide. Um, and I just find great with, job, Facebook. With all of the posts that are coming down because of violating community standards right now. Every person out there on the right who's had something taken down for saying anything. They're too busy censoring Trump supporters. And then for this graphic suicide to stay up there because it didn't violate community standards yeah. is just disgusting. Yeah, it's, it doesn't surprise me, though. No. It's uh, their malice and, incon- you know, 
incompetent, you know, at the same time. It's yeah. just disgusting. So awful. But um, get your kids off TikTok. Yeah. So I saw my cousin. I didn't get a chance to um, to answer a question, but she's like, hey, I'm failing at monitoring my kids' cell phone. I need something to monitor them. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, Life360 is a great app for that. But there are some some really great behind-the-scenes spy software that you can put on your kid's phone that you can literally see everything they type, yeah. everything they text, everyone they talk to, and, can, and, and they can't tell. The only problem with that, I mean, that's fantastic, but you're seeing things after potentially after or only at the same time as you're seeing it as it's happening. Yeah. So it right. So it's not going to help you from them seeing a graphic picture, about to see. But, yeah. you're, but when they're got someone texting them saying, Hey, let's go hook yeah, up a lot of the sexual or, stuff you know, <laughs> and, or, you know, Hey, there's a party at whatever, Yeah. you know, it's really going to um, open some eyes. I think to some parents about their sweet little innocent one, Yeah. you know? Um, and that's a pretty, I mean, Part of me is scared of that, not as, not as scared, is cautious with that because, you know, there is a certain amount of independence you need growing up and there's a certain amount of rebellion that you have to figure out on your own, but at the same yeah. time. Yeah, parents, you, you'll need discretion. You know, you can't yeah. abuse that power. It, it, you have to know what it's there for, This, you know, the, the safety of your child. Obviously, you know, if if they start saying, I hate my mom, I hate my dad, or, you know, you know, anything like that, you have, you can't step in on everything. Oh, but uh, at the same time, you know, um, if you're a parent today and you don't know everything that's on your kid's phone, you're failing as a parent, period. It's a dangerous world out there. Never before has your kid been able to access all the dangers of the world from their bedroom, Mm -hmm. right? From their bedroom, in the car, in the basement, around the corner, you can have every pedophile or every bad guy, human trafficker, drugs, whatever, at your doorstep instantly. Yeah. And if you're not, and that doesn't matter if you're in a nice neighborhood, that's where they go to recruit. They don't go to the hood, mm. right? So um, again, you know, if you don't know what's going on in your kids' phones, you're failing as a parent. And you know, there's plenty of stuff out there third-party apps that you can get that'll monitor their phones and you'll be able to, uh, you know, lock them down, keep them out of sights, all that stuff. Yeah, I think the one of the most important things is to not rely so heavily on that kind of technology that you skip the education part and teach your kid what to look for, how to act, kind of how to handle themselves if, if they're getting access to that, how to identify if I'm talking to a sexual predator, you know, so that they that they're not only safe because you might step in because you see it. That yeah. Know. Well, I th- you know, unfortunately, I think many parents are slow to that. Mm-hmm. Their kids are there way before they are. Yeah. You know, like, you know, kids in middle school now are drinking, taking drugs, and having sex all the time. Mm-hmm. That used to be pretty rare back in the day, and now it's like whatever. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, so I think parents are going to have a – are going to – you know, well, once they start looking at these phones, they're going to understand where their kids are at. But Mm -hmm. until they do that, um, I think that they're always going to be a year or two behind where their kids actually at. And hopefully if the damage isn't done. Yeah. So the main thing is if you're going to hand them a phone, hand them a phone that you see everything. Mm -hmm. Because the limit, the scale of trouble on here is unlimited. You know, it's a great tool to help you, but it's also a great tool classic good old flip phone that's still out there that you can call and you can text. Yeah, but then you can't have the apps like Live360 and some other things on there. You know, um, I'm all for giving them the most updated technology. Okay, you can have, you can call, you can text, and you can have one app, Live360. <laughs> good? Yeah, deal. <laughs> and a couple other spy ones that you don't even know about. So, when you, <laughs> you know, I, I know what the hell you're talking about. But I mean, um, and then I would not let my kid have Snapchat. I would not let my kid have uh, TikTok. TikTok. I mean, the amount of pornography and the amount of stuff these girls are well, even, and kids are putting out there right now is just unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, and I know that like parental controls and stuff don't really catch it enough on like YouTube and things right. like that. Someone was commenting, um, 
where I saw about this TikTok video, they were saying that a similar thing had happened to a YouTube video a couple years ago. And um, her daughter almost watched it, but she she watched all videos before allowing her daughter to watch anything. And so she yeah, who's got the time to do that? Good on that parent for doing that. That's really the, I mean to to be able to vet, even if I mean it's the safety stuff, but then it's also the influence stuff, right? You know, it's what what messages are coming through. You know, because of so much entertainment now is politics laced with. Yeah, politics and, and opinions and stuff like that. And so you want to know what influences are shaping your child. Well, and that goes back to the first topic we talked about today, which was some of the better things happening. And again, I think parents being home and being around more available, like, what are you watching? What are you playing? Mm-hmm. You know, and that's the other thing that people need to understand is that computer games and games on there, most of them have a chat function now. mm mm-hmm. So just because they're playing a war game doesn't mean that they're not chatting and saying, interacting with weirdos. Mm -hmm. Right. I wouldn't know that. Right. Literally just about every game on the planet now has a built in chat function Mm -hmm. and you can send messages back and you do all that stuff. And that's how I believe it or not, terrorists were communicating Mm -hmm. or using, you know, in game conversations and chats. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, you know, again, knowing what games they're playing, disabling the chat functions. So you can disable that? In some. Okay. You know, but again, those are things you're going to want to know and you're going to have to see because, um, you know, holy smokes, there's so much, again, there's so much trouble you can get into as a kid. That's the truth. So, Well, I think we're on for 57 minutes. I think it's time for us to wrap this up and pray us out. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this impromptu uh, live session for number seven, the return of Lauren. I will go back to my closet now. <laughs> my uh, um, so God bless you. God bless your family. Uh, God bless America. May he protect each and every one of us, our troops overseas, our first responders at home, our president, and give him the wisdom to and the uh, leadership to get us through this time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Out.